Hello everyone, I am back with this wonderful chapter. I'm being sarcastic. Anyway, uh, let's just continue so I can refill your daily quota for empathy. So, I believe we are somewhere else now. The SFIT Fitness Center was open 24 hours a day allowing its students to make use of the facility at whatever time their odd hours allowed them to. Even so, like any place, the fitness center had its peak hours, and the hours when it was all but abandoned, such as around midnight during the break between fall and spring semesters. A time that was perfect for Gogo's use. Gogo stood in the room that took up the largest level of the fitness center, a large rectangular room with bare concrete walls and a dark blue linoleum floor, part of which was covered in black padding. Gogo stood by a large, heavy punching bag hanging from a chain attached to the low ceiling. Other equipment such as a speed bag and a training dummy sitting nearby. Gogo was dressed in her workout clothes. A black, form-fitting tank top with yellow lining, along with black, capri-length yoga pants, and black sneakers with yellow laces. She wore a pair of fingerless padded gloves, also black lined with yellow, and her hair was pulled back and away from her neck, her purple highlighted locks bunched together by a hair clip. With a grunt, Gogo threw a fist at the punching bag, her glove knuckles striking the object with a dull thud. Gogo quickly followed up with a low shot from her other fist, droplets of sweat that had gathered on her skin flecking off from the force of the impact. Gogo threw a dozen more shots at the bag, each blow punctuated by a grunt of exertion that grew louder with every punch. Taking a quick step back, Gogo threw a, threw a kick at the back, her legs stretching until the blow landed above her head. Spinning around, Gogo drove her elbow into the back, the creak of the supporting chains drowned out by the young woman's loud, almost angry shout. Letting out an angry snarl, Gogo spun to face forward again, before leaping into the air and driving her knee into the bag as it swung back towards her, the force of the blow reversing the bag's momentum and sending it swinging a full foot away from her. So it's like Captain America in the gym during the Avengers. Wow, a voice said, startling Gogo prompting her to catch the punching bag as it swung back towards her and turned towards the source of the voice. Does it owe you any money or something? Behind Gogo, near the entrance of the room, was Wasabi, dressed in a lime green sweater and cocky gar cargo shorts. He gave Gogo an awkward, nervous smile that she did not return. What do you want, Wasabi? Gogo questioned as she tried to catch her breath. I was looking for you, Wasabi answered with a shrug as he glanced away from her. How'd you find me? Gogo asked, quirking an eyebrow at Wasabi as she walked away from the bag and scooped a sports bottle up off the floor. I notice this light when you go to the gym. When you like to go to the gym, Wasabi answered. Your motorcycle in the empty parking lot was kind of a dead giveaway, too. You didn't answer my question from before. Gogo pointed that after a long drink from the sports bottle. What do you want? He just said he was looking for you. Isn't that an answer? I was checking up on you, Wasabi explained. I wanted to make sure that you were okay. Well, here I am, all okay and stuff. Gogo stated as she wiped her face off with a towel. Mission accomplished. You know this is not what I was talking about, Wasabi said with an annoyed tone, his brow furrowing. Then what are you talking about, Darren? Gogo questioned in frustration as she tossed her towel onto the floor and turned to fully face Wasabi. Nobody has seen you in weeks, Yuri, Wasabi answered. Not since Tadashi's funeral. I've been busy, Gogo replied quickly, glancing away from Wasabi as she spoke. Busy avoiding us, Wasabi countered, his eyes narrowing. It's not like that! Gogo snapped, turning her gaze back towards Wasabi so she could glare at him. Then what's it like? Wasabi pushed. A person isn't an island. You need- Oh, don't get all zen with me, Darren! 
Gogo said with a disgusted tone, holding up her hands to sup Wasabi. You're not Takahito. No, Wasabi agreed, after pausing to take a deep breath. I'm not, but I know that when we should be pulling together, we're falling apart instead. I mean, the only person I could talk to anymore is Fred. Hiro shut himself off from the world, Cass is barely holding it together, and Honey is a mess. You forgot the fact that Riley is basically in a vegetative state. They're hurting Darren, Gogo spat, looking at him like he was an idiot. You don't think I know that? Wasabi snapped, his glare so intense it caused Gogo to take a surprised step away from him. You don't think I'm hurting too? God, Tadashi was the first friend I ever had here. He was... <sighs> Wasabi trailed off, visibly pushing the anger away from his features as he took another calming breath. He was my best friend. Wasabi finished as he gave Gogo a level look. So, yeah, Yuri, I know they're hurting. Gogo turned her gaze away from Wasabi and ran a hand over her face, while letting out a tired sigh. God, I'm... I'm sorry, Darren. Gogo sighed as she slowly turned her gaze back to the young man. I didn't... You know I'm no good with people. Trust me, I get that. Wasabi replied, a small smile creasing his features. That's why we're engineers, isn't it? Yeah, probably. Gogo agreed with a sort of order of amusement and a small smile. But the fact I'm a little more zen than you means I know this isn't something we can fix with a machine, Wasabi went on. Yeah, I... I know. Gogo replied hesitantly as she wrapped her arms around herself. I just... I can't do it. Why not? Wasabi questioned, before noting the hesitance in Gogo's stance. Come on, Yuri, you can talk to me. I can't look at them, Darren, Gogo replied, biting her lip as she spoke. Cass, Honey, Riley. I can't look at them knowing it was my fault. Your fault? Wasabi questioned, blinking at Gogo in confusion. Shut up, phone! How is what happened your fault? Blup. I could have done something, Gogo explained, her body growing tense as she talked. Instead, I just stood there like an idiot and let it happen. Yuri, Wasabi started to say, but fell silent as Gogo shot a withering glare at him. Don't, Gogo snapped. Don't you dare tell me there was nothing I could have done. I could have stopped Tadashi from going in there. Or better yet, I could have helped him, and then both he and Professor Callahan would still be alive. Or you'd be dead with them. Wasabi replied, raising his voice to match Gogo's. And then we'd be here mourning you too. You don't know that, Gogo argued. And you don't know that you could have helped, Wasabi rebutted. That's exactly it! Gogo screamed, her voice reverberating off the walls, her hands clenched in a tight fist. I don't know! I don't know if I could have changed anything and it's eating me up inside! Why do you think I'm here? Before Wasabi could answer... Gogo spun around and threw a fist at the punching bag, her cry of anger and frustration reverberating off the walls as her blow con connected with the bag with a meaty thwack. The pair stood in silence for a moment, the only sounds in the room being the swing of the punching bag and Gogo catching her breath. You can't keep doing this to yourself, Wasabi said, beating yourself up like this, wondering what you could have changed. You'll go insane. I know, Gogo sighed, but every time I look at one of the others, I- Gogo paused as she wrapped her arms protectively around herself. How's Riley? She questioned after a moment, her voice quiet and uncertain. The same, Wasabi answered with a sigh. She's pretty unresponsive most of the time, like she's stuck in a daydream or something. Her parents are taking her to a grief counselor, but I'm not sure how much help it will be. It's her powers. They're on the frets. You think this is because of her powers? Gogo inquired. Every single character in this story apparently can read my mind. Wow! 
It makes sense, Wasabi replied with a shrug. I imagine there were a lot of negative emotions flying around that night. Maybe she shorted something out. Maybe, Gogo agreed with a shrug. We have no way of knowing, do we? No, Wasabi answered with a shake of his head. We're out of our death here. See, this is what I'm talking about! Gogo exclaimed as she seemed with frustration again. I want to help, but I can't! It makes me want to- Gogo paused as she looked up at Wasabi and considered them for a moment. What? Wasabi questioned, growing uncomfortable beneath the weight of Gogo's stare. Are they going to have a moment? Spar with me, Gogo replied simply. Excuse me? Wasabi asked, quirking a surprised eyebrow at Gogo. Spar with me, Gogo repeated. It will help me burn off some steam. Might help you too. I'm not going to fight with you, Yuri, Wasabi grumbled. You're a black belt, Wasabi, Gogo pointed out with annoyance. I know you know the difference between a spar and a fight. That doesn't mean I want to do it, Wasabi argued, crossing his arms over his chest as he spoke. You said you wanted to help me, Gogo pointed out as she walked over to the center of the room. This isn't exactly what I had in mind, Wasabi stated as he glanced down at himself. I'm not even dressed properly. You're fine, Gogo replied, rolling her eyes before looking Wasabi up and down. Just take off your shoes and lose a sweater. You're eight. Wasabi began to protest, but was cut off as Gogo gave him a sharp glare. Man up, Wasabi, Gogo snapped. I'm telling you how to help. Now help! I know it says woman up, but Wasabi is a man, so I just said man up. Wasabi merely looked at Gogo for a moment before shaking his head and sighing dramatically, as he reached down and carefully untied his shoes before taking them off. After placing his shoes to the side, Wasabi grabbed a, grabbed a sweater and pulled it off with one smooth motion, revealing the white tank top he wore underneath. <sighs> Pardon me. Gogo's eyes widened as she watched Wasabi fold his sweater, her gaze drawn to the rippling muscles of the young man's arms and shoulders. What? Wasabi questioned as he turned around to find Gogo looking intently at him. She could eat you up. Hmm? Gogo replied, blinking in surprise for a moment before she realized what Wasabi had said to her, her cheeks turning pink. Oh, I was just noticing that, uh, you've been working out. You look good. Oh, uh, yeah, thanks. Wasabi replied awkwardly, his cheeks darkening, causing Gogo to smirk. Come on, let's get started. Gogo stayed in, motioning Wasabi over to the center of the room. Wasabi walked over to her, stopping a few feet in front of Gogo. The two faced each other before sliding into fighting stances. Ready? Gogo questioned, her smile turning wicked. I guess, sir. Are... Ah! Wasabi began to say before letting out a cry of surprise as Gogo rushed at him, leaving him with barely enough time to push her punch to the side as she thrust her fist at his face. Gogo stumbled for half a step, before planting one foot and sweeping at one of Wasabi's legs with her other. Wasabi managed to quickly lift his foot out of the way, pivoting away from her before the two of them faced off again. Not bad, Gogo commented as she caught her breath. You're quicker than I thought you'd be. Uh, thanks, Wasabi replied with a chuckle. You're pretty... Wasabi's words were cut off as Gogo rushed him again, throwing a spinning kick at his head that the young man was just barely able to lean away from. Using her continuing her momentum, Gogo crouched low and swept her leg at Wasabi's feet again, but he nimbly dodged out of the way. Still spinning, Gogo sent a third kick at Wasabi, this one directed at the young man's midsection. With lightning reflexes, Wasabi caught Gogo's foot with one hand, wincing at the force of the arm as the force of the blow ran up to his arm. Acting quickly, Wasabi heaved Gogo's leg upwards, flipping the smaller woman into the air. As she rose, Gogo tucked her knees up towards her chest, causing her to flip around in the air and allow her to lash out with both feet, 
kicking Wasabi in the chest and sending him reeling as she fell to the padded floor. Oh, wow. Finn Monster, you are really good at doing fight choreography. I think this is your first time doing it. I mean, you did a really good job earlier in the fic with Riley and the Microbots, but this just might take the cake. I can't wait to see how the other fight scenes in during Big Hero 6 are, are caught in the fanfic. It'll be interesting. Wasabi let out a cough of surprise as he caught himself, clenching his chest and looking over at Gogo in time to see her kick herself back up to her feet. Wow. Ow. Wasabi wheezed as he rubbed his chest. That was... That was impressive. I could see that she averts talking as a free action. Thanks, I practice, Gogo replied with a smirk. So how about you stop trying to go easy on me and show me what a black belt can actually do? All right, Wasabi replied, smirking back at Gogo while sliding back into his fighting stance. Gogo grinned as she rushed at Wasabi again, the young man not budging an inch as he watched her come. Swinging one foot below, Gogo feigned another sweep of Wasabi's feet before reversing her momentum at the last second and throwing a kick at the young man's head. Wasabi was not fooled, however, and ducked under Gogo's kick while stepping inside her guard. Planting his feet, Wasabi thrust his fist into Gogo's stomach, knocking the wind out of her, allowing him to slam the palm of his other hand against her chest, knocking the young woman off her feet and sending her rolling across the floor. As Gogo rolled to a stop, she rose up to her knees while leaving her forehead pressed against the mat, wrapping her arms around her chest as she gulped air back into her lungs. Seeing her like that caused Wasabi to instantly drop his guard as he rushed over to her, worry written across his features. Oh jeez, Yuri, are you okay? Wasabi asked as he moved to kneel by her side. I didn't mean to- Before Wasabi could finish, Gogo planted her hands against the floor and twisted her body before lashing out with a kick that struck the young man across the jaw, sending him spinning to the ground as Gogo rose back to her feet. What did I say about going easy on me? Gogo questioned as she gave Wasabi a minute to get back to his feet. Sorry, Wasabi grumbled, rumbled at his jaw as he turned to face Gogo. Won't happen again. That's what I like to hear. Gogo replied with a grin before she rushed at Wasabi again. Hopping into the air, Gogo spun around before lifting her leg to drop the heel of her foot on top of Wasabi's head. Wasabi was ready for her, though, and grabbed Gogo by the leg before she could deliver the blow. Grabbing Gogo's leg with both hands, Wasabi pivoted while pulling her down to slam her against the ground. As she fell to the floor, Gogo extended her arms and caught herself before Wasabi could, flow, could throw her. Still holding her leg, Wasabi looked down at Gogo in surprise as she pivoted on her hands before thrusting her free foot at his face. Quickly leaning out of the way of the attack, Wasabi took one hand off of the leg he already held and wrapped it around Gogo's other leg before she could pull it back, trapping both. Gogo quickly responded by wrapping her legs around Wasabi and using his support to pull herself up, cocking her fist back as she rose into a seated position. His eyes going wide at the incoming blow, Wasabi quickly released Gogo's leg and reached up to grab her arm before her fist could connect with his face. With both her arm and her leg in his grasp, Wasabi quickly turned and fell forward onto the floor, slamming Gogo's back against the mat. Gogo let out a cough of pain and surprise as the force of the blow caused Wasabi to loosen his grip on her. Seizing her chance, Gogo wrapped her arms and legs around Wasabi's arm before he could pull away and extended it into a painful arm lock. Hissing in pain, Wasabi tried to pull Gogo off of him, but couldn't budge her the young woman going so far as to push one of her feet against his face. Growling in frustration, Wasabi pulled himself to his feet while gripping Gogo with his free hand. Planting his feet, Wasabi rose up, picking Gogo up with him. Gogo had only enough time to look at Wasabi in surprise before he slammed her against the mat again, the blow knocking the air out of her lungs and forcing her to release Wasabi's arm. As Gogo fought to catch her breath, Wasabi pushed himself on top of her, planting his knee against her chest while holding her shoulder down with one hand and cocking the other back for a punch. Gogo struggled for a few minutes before sagging in defeat, unable to get Wasabi's weight off of her. Finn Monster, you were amazing. That fight scene 
I mean, that spar scene was incredible. I really can't wait to see and read how the other fights in the fanfic will go, if there are any. Which I think will come soon. How was that? Wasabi questioned, grinning as sweat formed on his brow. Now, that was what I expected from a black belt. Gogo replied with a smile of her own as she reached up and rested her hand on Wasabi's thigh. Um, Wasabi mumbled, his eyes going wide as he looked down at Gogo's hand. What are you doing? I'm very impressed, Gogo replied, her smile growing sensual as she looked at Wasabi with half-lidded eyes, her hand slowly inching its way up the young man's leg. I'm seeing if there's anything else impressive about you. I'm wondering if those two are actually going to kiss. Uh, Yuri, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure this. Wasabi fumbled with words, his face growing hot as she lift, shifted his legs uncomfortably. We shouldn't... Before Wasabi could finish, Gogo pushed his knee off her chest and slipped between his spread legs. As Wasabi blinked in surprise, Gogo grabbed his leg and pulled it out from under him sending the young man falling face-first against the floor. Before he could get up, Gogo grabbed Wasabi's leg, sat on the young man's lower back while pulling the appendage back and put it into a twisting leg lock. Wasabi let out a gasp of pain before he quickly began hitting his hand against the mat. Oh, it was actually a surprise attack. I see. Uncle! Uncle! Wasabi squeaked. I give! I give! You're such a baby. <laughs> Gogo chuckled as she released his legs and leaned back, resting her hands on Wasabi's muscular back. That was... That was dirty. Wasabi pointed out as he caught his breath, looking over at his shoulder at Gogo. It sure was, she replied, looking back at him with a suggestive smile. Seeing her look at him like that caused Wasabi's face to heat up again, as he, and he moved to pick himself up off the ground. As he did, Gogo shifted her weight, causing Wasabi to roll over onto his back while Gogo spun around and sprawled across his chest. His eyes winding in surprise, Wasabi watched as Gogo crawled up his body until she was looking him in the eye, her face inches from his. Hey, Gogo greeted, her voice a soft whisper, a few dangling strands of her hair having come loose from her hair clip. Hi! Wasabi squeaked in reply. Pardon me for asking, but are they gonna have sex? I'm all dirty, Gogo said before leaning down and sniffing the skin off Wasabi's neck. And you smell funny. Th th that's what happens when you work up a sweat, Wasabi stuttered. Sweat completely unrelated to the workout he just had forming on his brow. I guess so. Gogo agreed as she looked him in the eye, again. Your place isn't far from here, right? Yeah, Wasabi answered, confusion intermingling with his nervousness. Why? I need to take a shower, Gogo answered, sitting up on Wasabi's stomach and stretching her arms above her head, giving the young man a clear view of her curves. Th th they have showers here, d don't they? Wasabi replied, causing Gogo to look down at him with an expression that made Wasabi feel incredibly stupid. Come on, Darren, Gogo said as she lay her hands on Wasabi's chest and began absentmindedly tracing his muscle with her fingers. You of all people know public showers are disgusting. Yeah, Wasabi answered, feeling like his blood was rushing towards one part of his body. Th that's true. That is decided. Gogo stated that she rolled off him and stood up in a way that Wasabi was certain was supposed to draw his eyes towards her posterior. You don't mind, do you? Uh, I... Wasabi mumbled, having lost all ability to form actual words. You still want to help me, right? Gogo questioned as she looked down at him, her eyes half-lidded and her smile sensual. At that moment... Wasabi thought she was the most beautiful woman she had ever seen. He had ever seen. Yes, Wasabi answered, his voice a barely audible whisper. Good. 
Gogo purred before reaching down and offering Wasabi her hand. Up and at him, then. Wasabi took her offered hand and let Gogo help pull him to his feet. After he stood, Gogo kept her hand linked with his, rubbing her thumb across Wasabi's skin before turning and leading him towards the exit. D do you want to take a shower first? Wasabi offered, scooping up his things as they passed. Oh, come on, Darren, Go Gogo replied, rolling her eyes as she looked back at him and grinned wickedly. Why would we waste water like that? Wasabi did not answer, almost dropping his things in shock, as Gogo led him out of the room, shutting the lights off as they left. Wow. I actually needed that. I actually really, really needed that after the downer of Chapter 13 and the first part of this. It's a bit late, but there's still some problems that we're going to need to solve through the reading. So, office note. Hey guys, long time, no see. Sorry for the long wait, but I had a lot of stuff going on. To say nothing about how tough this chapter ended up being to write. Still, I love the way it turned out, and I hope that, along with how long it ended up being, it makes up for it. As always, feedback and critiques are always welcome, so please review. Later. It's okay, Finn Monster. I kind of have a lot of stuff going on, too, with my videos and stuff. But you made up for it with this uh, very good chapter. And the choreography in the sparse scene was incredible. So I can't wait to see more of this. As always, I'm the Masked Ranger saying, Story time is fun time. Keep moving forward. And I hope to see you all soon. Bye.